Hello, and welcome to another practice time with Amy. And Jamie. I'm Amy. I am a therapist in Philadelphia. I see couples and individuals. I don't see children, which will be pertinent to our exercise today, but here we are. <laughs> I'm Jamie. I am a family therapist in uh, the Philadelphia area and I work with a lot of children. Um, so the family-based work that I do is meeting families in their homes. Um, so it is, yeah, a lot of work with the whole family system and um, children through uh, adolescence. So I am looking forward to getting into today's exercise. Nice. Cool. So as we are alluding to, we are doing exercises from the child therapy book. And the one we're going to practice today is naming feelings. And why don't we jump into the criteria for this skill? Okay. So it looks like there's only two criteria here. So first we have uh, tentatively identify an emotion that the child or character in the play or story may be feeling using a specific descriptive emotion word. Okay. And second criteria, use emotional expression in your face and voice as you name the feeling. Okay. So that, that second criteria is going to be, uh, a nonverbal criteria, looking at how we're delivering what we're saying. Amy, will you be my lovely client today? I certainly will. Let me step into my child client self. <laughs> we will start with our first client statement. <sighs> um. I told you this game is too hard. I want to play something else instead. Hmm. Sounds like you're feeling a little frustrated with this game that we're playing. Okay, nice. So checking your statement based on the criteria. Um, you met criteria one by naming frustrated. And you, yeah, I think that criteria too, I saw kind of a furrowed brow of like frustrated. Um, and I wonder if you could kind of heighten that emotional expression as you're naming the feeling for criteria two. Okay, sure, good feedback. Do you wanna try that one again? Yes, let's do that. Um, I told you this game is too hard. I want to play something else instead. Yeah, it sounds like you're feeling really frustrated right now with this game we're playing. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good. It was good. I think that, that um, heightened it more than your first response. Um, again, you met criteria one by being frustrated and then really kind of intensifying your like, oh, really frustrated for criteria two. Great. Thanks. <laughs> well done. Mm -hmm. I'm really feeling being in my early 30s today with the <laughs> number 11 between my eyebrows. You know, I'm really feeling my like six year old today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Awesome. Um, okay, ready to try a harder statement? Yes, let's give it a whirl. Okay. Quick, the bad guy is chasing us. We have to run away as fast as we can before he catches up. Yeah, it's, it sounds like we're pretty scared of the bad guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got some giggles this year. <laughs> Uh, your inner child, like your child self was just so charming and adorable. It distracted me a little bit. Well, I think that you 
still had a really great response. Um, meeting criteria one, identifying scared as my emotion in this play scenario. Um, and then two, really feeling like you matching my, um, my emotional expression of kind of um, hyper and scared. I, I saw that as you, with your body language, with your facial expression. So definitely met both criteria. Great, can we check out the example response for that one? Totally. So the statement again is quick, the bad guy is chasing us. We have to run away as fast as we can before he catches up. And the example response is, oh man, I'm worried something bad will happen. Are you worried too? So I like how in the example response, the therapist was a little bit more engaged in the story um, and seemed a little more, uh, involved in their, in their role in the story. Whereas I feel like in the question that I asked, um, I sounded more like a therapist than sounding like someone who is engaged in this shared activity with the child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So really joining in with their play and naming an emotion in that play. Mm -hmm. Yeah ready for uh even harder statement sure am you have to promise not to tell my parents but one time i got in a really bad fight with another girl at my school and she's really tall so i called her a giraffe in front of all the boys but only because she was mean to me first wow i have no idea where to even <laughs> Go with that. Oh my gosh. It really is. Um, it's more of a struggle than I was expecting it to be to like, uh, kind of like be, be in a little, be in a child's mind, like to really meet the child client where they are. Mm -hmm. Um, cause like I called her a giraffe and like, you know, these are just like things that we don't encounter in a lot of our sessions with adults. Um, so yeah, I need a little reset, uh, mm -hmm. going into that going into that one again. Yeah, it is. It's challenging. You have to promise not to tell my parents, but one time I got in a really bad fight with another girl at my school and she's really tall. So I called her a giraffe in front of all the boys, but only because she was mean to me first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, um, it sounds like you're feeling maybe a little worried to to talk to your parents about what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think you met criteria one with naming worry, naming that emotion. Um, I don't know that you met criteria two. You, it was, it was tentative, right? You're kind of asking, is it worry? Um, but I didn't feel, I didn't really see any like facial expression or voice that like conveyed that worry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think if anything, it just conveyed, conveyed my own confusion, <laughs> not actual um, worry or, or meeting the client. Uh, yeah. Let's give that one another try. You have to promise not to tell my parents but one time I got in a really bad fight with another girl at my school and she's really tall. So I called her a giraffe in front of all the boys, but only because she was mean to me first. Hmm. Sounds like you're feeling maybe a little worried to talk to your parents about what happened with this girl at school. Um, look, do you mind if we check the example response? For that one, I was I was a little bit stuck, like drawing, drawing the emotion from what it was that you were saying. Like, you know, I kind of just like picked worried, but I'm wondering if maybe there was like a more appropriate or, or another um, another emotion that could have also worked. Yeah. Okay. So the statement is. You have to promise not to tell my parents, but one time I got in a really bad fight with another girl at my school and she's really tall. So I called her a giraffe in front of the, all the boys, but only because she was mean to me first. The example response is, 
I want to hear more about how she was mean to you and what happened. But before that, I want to understand how you're feeling. Maybe you feel a bit embarrassed about calling this girl a giraffe and worried that I'll tell your parents what happened. Okay, so you definitely got the worried part and the sample response added the embarrassed part. as mm -hmm. the Okay, yeah, that was helpful to see in the example response that um, they were also identifying some embarrassment in there. Yeah, great job. Um, with your practice today, it seemed like it was a little bit hard sometimes to find the emotion, especially in the that last statement. Um, but yeah, how did that, how did it feel for you doing this exercise as the therapist? I would say for me, the most valuable takeaway from this was particularly, I think it was the second one that we did, the second example, um, that really focused on the therapist like immersing themselves in the child's story or play or narrative that's something I don't I don't do a lot of work with it's not a lot of play therapy um, per se so that was a good reminder for me of how the therapist can still be using a, a particular skill still be doing a therapeutic intervention in a way that, really meets the child where they are and really meets their, their story and their, their, the landscape that they're creating. Um, that was, yeah, that was personally my big takeaway from this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I liked, um, I'm thinking about how like children often have a hard time understanding and identifying their emotions. So I could see it being really helpful for the therapist to, pinpoint an emotion, um, whether or not it's the correct one for the child just gives like a starting point to, I think, identifying like, oh, what emotion am I feeling in this game I'm playing or with the bully at school? Um, mm -hmm. Because it, it seems like a foundational like starting point for working with kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the way that you phrase it as a foundational starting point, because we're essentially put attempting to put you know, feelings-based language to a, a system that doesn't have the language yet. So it really is, um, it really is a foundational starting point in that way. So I think another thing I appreciate about this um, skill is, you know, I'm not a parent myself, but I imagine um, Sometimes when kids are like emotional or angry or outbursting or having some experience, um, oftentimes the response from caregivers is to like shut that down or try to manage it, control it, you know, go settle down or whatever, instead of like, how are you feeling? What are you feeling? And so having a child have the experience of someone help them say like, oh, you sound frustrated. You sound embarrassed. Um, I imagine that can be a, a healing, a, a, a learning, a growth skill for the child to have a space that says like, yeah, I am feeling embarrassed, right? Especially mm -hmm. if you're not getting that elsewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you just described that because um, in, in our work in family-based, we do a lot of what we call modeling. So we might do, say, a family session, and we might all be in a shared activity that's, you know, in encouraging, um, encouraging some type of emotional expression. And as the therapist, we might use both criteria one and criteria two with the child in front of the caregivers. And we're modeling that for the caregivers with the hope that once we you know, discharge from family-based services that those caregivers are going to use those skills that they've seen us use with their children. So, um, yeah, that is super valuable because I think that this skill, you know, not to say that, um, untrained therapists should just be using these kinds of skills haphazardly, but, um, these skills are things that caregivers can do with their kids. Both criteria one and criteria two are pretty accessible mm -hmm. skills for caregivers to work on with their, their children. So I really appreciated you mentioning that, Amy. That was really valuable. Well, 
Thanks for joining us for another practice time on child therapy with Amy and Jamie. See you next time.